that if there's places where we keep on trying to achieve certain goals and they just keep falling short or keep missing the mark, help us to see where we're not hitting those initial marks that we need to be hitting as far as trusting you. And for those of us who are working hard to hit those initial marks and do all the right things but don't have a bigger picture of what our life is for, Lord, give us a bigger picture. Give us some dreams. Give us some visions. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today we are looking at some times of beginning. We see Jesus beginning his ministry after he's baptized. We see Moses in the book of Deuteronomy giving some final instructions to the people of Israel so that when they get into the promised land, that they will begin well and that they can keep on being the people God called them to be. So today, as we begin the season of Lent, I want to encourage us to look at how do we begin well, and also how do we end well in having that impact that God has called us to have to be a blessing to the world around us. So the image for today, I know it's always dangerous to use an illustration of something that you're not very good at, but the image that I'm using for today has something to do with this round ball with holes in it that you throw at pins. Theoretically, you're supposed to knock those pins down, I understand. And I do if the bumpers are up. But today I want to look and just invite us to look at how the Christian life is in many ways defined by bowling. So today we're going to do bowling for Jesus. Nice. Um, so a couple of things to look at. All of us know what it means to end well when we're bowling. It means that those pins that are down there at the end of the lane the whole point is to have the ball impact them and move them. The whole point of the Christian life is that our lives impact people, impact situations, and move people to a better place, move situations to a better place. So we were designed as children of God to have an impact in the world. But So that's one of the, the markers we're going to look at, is what happens to the pins, the end of the story. But the beginning... I understand that there's little arrows on the bowling alley that actually are supposed to help people. Maybe that's why I don't ever hit the pins at the end of the alley. But there's little arrows, there's little markers on the lane that theoretically, any bowlers out there use those little arrows at the beginning of the lane? Maybe that's it. I think that what we want to look at is that in the Christian life, there is a goal. We're called to make a difference. We're called to have an impact in the world. But we also hit that impact by focusing on those initial markers that God calls us to align ourselves with. So today, I want to invite, because some of us maybe are described by one of these shortcomings. Some of us might be described by the other of these shortcomings. For some of us, maybe we have good long-term goals. We're looking at those pins. We want to have a, a healthy family. We want to bless our family. We want to be successful in our work. We want to be a blessing in our community. And we're good at focusing down the alley at the end result we're aiming for. But for some of us, as we're looking down the alley, we're completely disregarding those little marker arrows at the beginning of the alley. And we keep wondering why we keep on missing what we're aiming for. For some of us, we have such a fixation on those marker arrows that in the short term of what do I need to do today, that we never actually focus that our life is about more than just making it through today. That there's actually a bigger picture that we're called to be a part of. That we're called to do more than just hit our goal for today, but we're called to have an impact in the world around us. So, do either of those things maybe describe your spiritual life? That you have these wonderful long-term goals, but you end up missing them because your short-term disciplines are, are not there. Or maybe is your life more that you've got some good short-term disciplines, but you don't really have any bigger picture of what your life is for, and you're not really dreaming, you're not really visioning what your life could be about. So let's start out with that first scenario. That scenario where you've got your long-term goal, you know the impact you want to make, you know the pins you want to knock over, but you keep on missing them because you're disregarding those markers at the beginning of the lane. If that describes you, I think that's what Jesus was confronted with as he was baptized. He heard those words, you're my beloved son, the Holy Spirit came upon him. And Satan's temptation right at the beginning was to cause Jesus to disregard those markers and jump right toward the results. And 
So what, what Satan is saying to Jesus is, uh, Jesus, you don't have to go through all that lighting yourself up and doing all that stuff. I can knock over these pins right away for you. I can give you all the impact, all the influence that you would ever want. And you don't need to waste your time with all that stuff of listening to your father and serving people and all that stuff. Let's just go for the results. So he says, Jesus, I have the authority that I can get things done. Jesus, if you just follow me, I'll give you the power over people to get them to do whatever they want. And Jesus is saying, that's not the way I do it. My power isn't that way. My power is to lift people up, not to make them do things. So Jesus is aligning himself to something, that, that marker that maybe doesn't make so much sense if you're only looking at the results. If you're looking at the results, Jesus' initial alignment doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So, then also the people of Israel. Moses is concerned. He's not going to be going into the promised land with the people. And he knows that while they're in the wilderness, they're focusing day by day on those short-term things. And they're focusing on, we need to trust God. We need to trust God for food today. We need to trust Him to get through today. But he's concerned that once they get to the promised land, and all of a sudden, now I can build a house, and I can become wealthy, and I can be comfortable. He's concerned that they're not going to finish well, because they're going to forget about those short-term disciplines that they had in the wilderness. So, in your life, if you look at your life, that I've got great goals, I want to be a good citizen, I want to be a good family member, good husband, good wife, I want to impact people in a positive way, and you keep on noticing that no matter how hard you try, that you end up missing the mark. That maybe for you this season of Lent is time to look at what some of those markers are you might be disregarding. So, some of those things in the Bible that don't make sense, it's like when you're bowling and you're aiming over here so that the ball will go over there. Someone looking from the outside might think that looks really dumb. Why don't you just aim straight toward the pins? All I know is when I aim straight toward the pins, my ball ends up in the gut. So, the Bible, I think, gives us some things where Jesus says, you know what, I'm not focusing on the, the end result right now, I'm just focusing on what my Father is saying. I'm focusing on His Word, I'm focusing on my relationship with Him. And the people of Israel, Moses is saying, when you get into the land, don't focus on the results right away. The first time you get that harvest, take some time to slow down, give the first of it back to God, remember who got you there, remember who you are, and then that blessing in the promised land won't, you lead, won't lead you into the gutter, but it will lead you toward becoming the blessing that you're designed to be. So sometimes in the Bible there are certain things, and during the season of Lent we're invited to look at maybe where we're not aligning ourselves properly, that there are odd things in the Bible that don't make sense, like tithing. Tithing doesn't make sense. Why should I think I'm going to make more impact with 90% of my money than I could with 100%? And God says, the whole point is to align your life toward me. And, and you'll discover that your 90% will have much more impact than the 100% would have in your own hands. Or things like Sabbath. In our busy world, it doesn't make any sense to take a day off to rest and to focus on family and God. It's how can I make as much of an impact in the world in six days as I could in seven? And somehow, as we align ourselves toward that thing that doesn't make sense, and as we focus our lives on God, God shows us that He can accomplish more in and through us in six days when we're aligned with Him than He could through us in seven days when we're trying to align our own lives. Or like devotions. At the beginning of the day, um, believe it or not, pastors aren't always the best at taking personal devotion time. Um, that I think sometimes you get so busy doing the business, I'm doing this for a purpose of a Bible study, for the purpose of doing a sermon, and we might not be as good at just taking time to just slow down and listen for our own relationship with God. And so I've been doing a, a huddle with some other pastors around the country um, that we do online every Thursday. And part of the discipline that we've been sharing is that we have been doing the Moravian Texts readings each day, and we've been keeping each other accountable by posting what we got out of our devotions in the morning. And so it keeps me accountable. I've decided during Lent I'm just going to copy what I'm posting back to them on the Facebook page. 
So if you, if, if you want to check and make sure I'm being accountable to <laughs> doing my devotional time, uh, it'll be on there. It might not be the most well-written things, but it's more of a reflection. But I think it's a challenge because you get to work and you think, well, I don't have enough time for devotions. I've got to get to my to-do list. And what God says is, if you're just jumping straight to your to-do list, you might be aiming toward those pins, but you're going to miss them. The whole point is take time to align yourself with me. And some of those other things in the Bible that we think are old-fashioned and, gee, they aren't as sophisticated and smart as we are today. There's so many things in the Bible that seem like we're taking and we're aligning. Why do you love your enemies and bless your enemies? Why do you do that? And all these things that don't make sense, that they're all meant to align us in a way that maybe look like we're heading the wrong direction, but God will take our lives and spin us in a way that will make the maximum impact. As, and so maybe God's getting your attention, some area in your life during Lent that you've been disregarding something that God's been saying to you. And it's time to align yourself toward what God is saying. Because what you'll discover is that going that direction, even if it's counterintuitive, actually will end up leading you toward the life that God designed you to have. So, I'm going to spend a lot of time on that one. But I think that might describe several of us here today. That we have, big, we have very positive long-term goals, but we're missing them just because those, short little dis those simple disciplines, that simple focus is missing in our lives. So the season of Lent for you might be just slowing down and saying, God, where am I just needing to align myself differently in prayer and in giving and in relating to people? But there are also some here today, probably, that have the danger that religious people might fall into, to be so fixated on those marker arrows that we don't have any bigger picture in life than just be do following the rules for our own sake. That maybe we are those kinds of people that say, my only goal is to, I've got to give this much money to church, I've got to be on this committee, I've got to spend this much time praying, and we are just so fixated on hitting that arrow that we might not even have a longer term vision. So we might have that arrow right in front of us, the pins are down there, and we're just fixated on that arrow. We might be standing over here right next to it and bowl right into the gutter and we applaud ourselves because we hit the arrow. But our life didn't make any impact on anybody else. So maybe for you, your Christian life is all about those disciplines that, and I think a lot of people, it's, I gotta be a good person, I gotta follow the rules, I gotta make sure that I do everything the Bible says, but we don't have any bigger picture than just doing it for the sake of being a good person. That when all of those disciplines are just about us, do you think we might be missing the point? The whole point for you, if that's your life, is just trying to hit those short-term goals and they're all about you, Maybe for you, this Lent is not a time to focus even harder on Lenten disciplines that make you hit those goals. Maybe for you, it's time to pray that God would give you a bigger picture. That God would give you the reason why you're doing those things. The reason is not just so that you can be a good person. The reason is because God wants to align you so that your life has an impact in the world around you. And maybe you're someone who's never thinks of, well, I'm too busy doing my disciplines to actually go and bring food to my neighbor. I'm too busy doing my disciplines then to actually go and spend time with my kids. But maybe for you, it's time to ask God to show you why you're doing those things. That it's so that you can make an impact in the people that God has put into your life. So that you can take some risks and you can accomplish some things to bless people around you. That maybe you won't ever do if you're just focusing on hitting those little marks for yourself. So for me, one of my favorite verses is in Hebrews, where it talks about Jesus, how as he aims toward those short-term goals, that he's looking beyond them. It says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame. That for me, that's the whole story. That Jesus kept himself aligned with his identity. He kept himself aligned with his purposes, even if it meant heading toward the cross because he saw what was at the end of the alley. He saw the end of the story was as he aligned himself with what God's purposes were, he saw us forgiven. He saw us free. He saw us in relationship with God. And for the joy that was set at the end of the alley, he kept himself focused on those markers. 
those markers that said, greatness in my kingdom is not being served, it's in serving. Those markers that said, I'm only going to do what the Father tells me to do. That, those markers that said, I'm going to choose a bunch of loser fishermen and tax collectors and cause them to be the ones that will make this kingdom work instead of doing it all myself. That whatever he did, he did because he knew his life was meant to have an impact. So for you, maybe this season of Lent is just taking time to say, God, I'm so busy going through the motions, I'm tired out, and I don't see anything bigger than just trying to do things for myself. And maybe for you this Lent, it's time to say, God, help me to see what my life is for. Help me to see where I need to just stop being so stressed out at the beginning of the alley that I'm going to just invest in my kids. I'm going to redo my schedule so I can spend time with my family. I'm going to go and take that class so that I can use these gifts that I'm given. I'm going to volunteer to be part of this committee because I can make a difference in this area. So the whole point is that this season of Lent is that we need both. We need that initial alignment and we need that long-term vision. And if you're lacking on either end of that, that may God help you to focus on the area that you're lacking this Lent. Because usually people just focus on those initial arrows during Lent, trying to be good people. But maybe for you, your focus needs to be on the big picture. I, haven't, I forgot what it means to dream. I forgot what it means to have vision. I forgot what it means to feel like I can make an impact in the world. I'm just being a nice person. Maybe for you, it's time to say, give me some dreams. Give me some visions. You know where you're at. You know if, if your error is arrows. And you know if your arrow is not having any long-term vision. Whatever it is, invite God to complete your whole game for the sake of glorifying Him and impacting those pins that He's put in your life, those people, those situations, to His glory.